Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Trials of Mana. I'm the Mysterious JG, and I have to get over it, but I'm still just just charmed by the fact that I've kind of quasi sequence broken things here. I had no idea that you could uh, skip gnome. We won't we won't be able to do it forever, but I'm really curious how far you can take this. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to take it as far as you can because we will hit a point after we've gotten the Jin Spirit, uh, this Wind Spirit, which is named Jin. We can't let ourselves be power, overpowered again. But we are going to need to hop back and uh, take advantage of the off-screen grinding. Uh, and for that reason, we won't, like, go to the nth degree of ignore. Actually, you know what? Yeah, he. It, it sounds like the game's not going to... I could try really hard. I could go back and figure out how you get to the next area... There's a town you need to go to, that town where they said, there's all Tanish spies, we can't let you in. You need to go there and get a ship from there to go to the country where the Wind Spirit is found. So the key is going to be, now that you've dealt with the uh, Altanish plotline, is that guy still not going to let you in? Or is he the thing that stops you from continuing until you have the Gnome Spirit? Once you have the Gnome Spirit, he suddenly stops being there blocking you. I have a feeling that's what it is. Once you've experienced war, you can't help but worry how long peace will last. His Majesty is safe! Thanks to you, Durant. It was actually me, but alright, whatever. I'll let Durant have this one. Under no circumstance will I allow Charlotte any credit, but Durant can have this one. And this is why it's a little silly to spend so much time exploring all these rooms while there are enemies around, because I could just come back and explore them in, at my leisure here. Are you looking for someone? I'm looking for a little cactus, actually. Altena won't pull one over on us next time. We'll double the guard. If I see anyone from Altena, I'll kill them on the spot. There's no way I'm unable to recognize an Altanish mage when I see one. JG is making a funny. I had to like state that because otherwise I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to tell. All right, I explored all these zones. So, oh, we can't jump down from here. All right, it's, um, there's various screens uh, that are now down, which makes it actually easier to navigate wherever you want. Um, and I was just a little curious, is there anything? Yeah, there we go. I figured there had to be something hidden back here. And the guards are just like, yeah, take whatever treasure you want. We really don't care. You know, other than being curious about dialogue, there's no real reason to talk with any of these folks. We soldiers won't let anyone take Valencia. Oh, so you want it to be a uh, consensual, huh? Wonder well, I hope to be as good a swordsman as the king himself. Well, I haven't really seen that he's any good. Uh, we saw him kind of frozen by magic. Well, Tuna won't we'll pull one over. Okay, I'm not even going to bother to talk to that guy because it seems like there's a handful of guard phrases that are being recycled. That's fine. I don't expect every NPC to have unique dialogue necessarily. I'll leave you guys to it. And the fairy's like, I told you guys we should have gotten dwarf. The red dwarf, the BBC uh, sitcom. I don't know if there's much point in looking for red dwarf now that Rimmer's gone. I mean, I remember when red dwarf first first came to the United States? I thought it was pretty fun, like because it felt like this obscure, weird show, and then it turns out it was actually a really mainstream success in the UK and. Probably lasted a lot longer than I... <laughs> you know, I didn't watch every season of that show. So, uh, yeah, this, let me just say Rando, who's uh, got a tiny, tiny YouTube audience. Let me just insult Red Dwarf and its popularity for no reason. I'm sure you'll be fine. Whatever. No, I enjoyed that show. It's just like, yeah, when I found out it ran for like seven seasons and like most of the original cast wasn't involved in it by the end. I was like, okay, not the kind of show that I would have expected them to, like, milk to death. 
So it actually is, in a sense, it's worth exploring this place, because even though I did it as Duran in the flashback, it kind of didn't count. Fortune Teller is gone. She was an important character for Duran's backstory, but I guess there's nothing for us to say to her now, so she's just gone. Oh, a little cactus. Found a little cactus. Few undiscovered treasure boxes. Let's check out how many undiscovered treasure boxes are. View from the map menu. Prize here. Oh, okay, there's a counter. I don't think I ever paid enough attention to this. There's a counter. One of four. We have found one of four treasure boxes. And this screen. It's not telling us where they are, it's just telling us how many there are. Okay. Treasure boxes aren't that big a deal. Oh, I planted a seed in the inn's magic pot and it sprouted. Whoosh, just like that. Treasure boxes aren't really that big of a deal in this game because they never have equipment or anything unique. It's always just like, you know, cup of wishes or chocolate or whatever. But, um... One of them here, what is it? Uh, view undiscovered treasure boxes and little cactus sightings. That seems like it would be useful, except that you're over halfway there before you get that power. So at that point, like, you're either... Well, I suppose you could get... That's what, like two-thirds of the way? Don't do math in your head, JG. Never do math in your head. But yeah, that's like kind of like two-thirds of the way. Yeah, it would be two-thirds about... Almost exactly two-thirds, because... Because two-thirds of 50... Or 100 would be 67, and half of 60... Yeah, that's about right. But, um, yeah, so I suppose you could get that many of them legit without a fac and then use that power to find the rest of them. And the little cactus ring and cactus chain ability are... Apparently they're nice, but I don't think they're game-breaking. Like, it's not like you've got the ultimate sword which teaches you the ultimate magic and nothing in the game can challenge you anymore. Because beyond the fact that this game isn't... It's more like... I like this game. I'm enjoying this game a lot. But it's more like it's, it's fun and light than it is like a hardcore RPG challenge by any stretch. So, uh, in addition to not needing game-breaking items to win, like, uh, from what I've heard, those, the things you get from the little cactus are not game-breaking things. Oh, there's Duran. No one can beat him. Penny, for your thoughts. This is your hometown. You swore you'd never come back, and now you're back. You feel like a failure? That's my home. I sort of promised I wouldn't go back until I'd finished my mission. So he just feels kind of... Yeah, he's, I think he's hiding behind the tree. He just doesn't want to be seen because he's already... And he did it to say... Like, you know, I'm not trying to... Like, I'm joking around. I'm not trying to give Duran serious guff here. He, we came here because we needed information from the Hero King. And also, once we got here, we found out the Hero King was in danger and needed our help anyway. But oh. Sorry, not in here. Anywhere but here. This is my home. When I left for Wendell, I promised I wouldn't come back home until I defeated the Crimson Wizard. So, it's complicated. Fine. You don't have to go. You know how obnoxiously stubborn you can be. This is like his personal quest. Come on. <sighs> Too bad. I was looking forward to seeing your room, though. All those skeletons in your closet and secrets under your bed. Cut it out. And uh, I remember from the SNES version, and I was curious and looked it up. And I don't want to head back for that. Because, well... Oh, I thought for a second that was a uh, little cactus again. Uh, I don't want to trigger it over and over again, but because um, we just get the same scene repeatedly. But, uh, yeah, in the SNES version, she specifically says that, oh, you don't want me to go in there. Why? You got a bunch of naughty magazines in there? And I believe in the Japanese version, the subtitles, I'm sure, even if we were playing with Japanese audio, are going to translate it in a Monday way. But, yeah, I believe in the Japanese version, she specifically says, ooh, if we went in there, am I going to find a bunch of naughty girly mags? And his, But his reaction is exactly the same, like, uh, knock it off. <laughs> but not really denying precisely. You know those spinny things outside of town? Those are called windmills. No one knows why they spin. It's a mystery. Um... What? I know why they spin. It's... They... 
they're in there grinding. Well, actually, I really don't know, do I? They, well, they, they grind um, millet or something. There's an agricultural thing. They spin. The wind catches them and they spin and they use it for grinding meal. And I don't, I'm not a farmer, precisely. And now there's JG. JG's not like intentionally making me sound like a dumb valley girl. He just, he doesn't fucking know either. But, um. Yeah, they spin because of the wind. <laughs> they are not a machine. Like, the point isn't that, like, something is happening to make them spin. The design is so that they spin because the, the energy of them spinning those, um. I don't know what you actually call the big, like, the big things that catch, win, and turn. But, yeah, the, the point is that the force of their spinning uh, grinds stuff. I'm an expert on science. You can educate me in the comments if you want to. It doesn't matter. This is all. It's like, I know this. Look, if somebody, somebody says it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I knew that. We got something called the bumpkin. That's That's nice. And if it seems like, hey, how did you get all the way up to, like, level 38 trying to level up that seed thing to 5 and you're still not there or already at 2.5, it's a, it's a diminishing returns thing. Like, going from 1 to 2 took less seeds than going from 2 to 3 will, and then 3 to 4 takes more, and 4 to 5 takes a lot more. So, you, you, you take it takes a bunch of time to get from level 4 to level 5. The town is mostly spared, but you never know when another kingdom may attack when our guard is down. I know Altana's not going to bother to attack. Apparently, you guys don't even have a man of stone in your castle. Like, the the Altanish ma mages are attacking, trying to get a man of stone. And I'm, I guess the Crimson Wizard was going to be interrogating the Hero King about where the stones are. Because, um... Ah! Eek! This is what I, I'm invading your house in the middle of the night, jumping up and down, going eek. <laughs> this doesn't bother you? Well, I'm impressed with your Zen state of calm. It's still the kingdom of the plains. That has not changed in the interim. Don't really need anything from an item store, but we can pop our heads in to see if there's any interesting NPCs about. Oh, this place serves as the tavern as well. There was one. There once was a time no country would dare think of invading the mighty Valsina. Ah, oh, we really suck now. Things seem so treacherous out in the world these days. I hope nothing happens to the town. And it's one of those RPG worlds where the mightiest country in the world with the most powerful army has like less than 30 people in it. Maybe. It might be more than 30 NPCs in this kingdom. Wendell is quite close to Jad, you know. There was a ship that traveled to Jad from the port of Maya, east of Alsena. My word, I had no idea Jad had such troubles. I guess we told her. First, Altena attacks Valsena, and now this? What is happening to the world? Oh, it's all about those mana stones. People go crazy from mana stones, apparently. Not you. I'm trying to talk to Armo here, the armored man. Uh, Metallo, or, um... Moltar, or Metal. Metallo is the, the metal guy from Space Ghost. One day I hope to be as good a swordsman as the king himself. Which you've already heard a hundred times. You like something to eat? You're too, a little too young for something to drink? Welcome, take a seat. Okay, we're not hearing anything that he didn't hear as part of his uh, flashback story. Flashback FM. Welcome. Come, take a look. Mm-hmm. I don't have any Stardust Herbs. They change... Oh, they dispel magic effects. They are not expensive, but apparently are just a really rare item drop. Always good to have a spare. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I guess go I'll have then. a few on hand just in case. Although, honestly, if I don't go in and actually bring them up in my inventory... Um, rich Incense increases Lucre. Uh, Sag and Ship. Dream. I don't know how often I'm going to use any of these. Okay. Just in case. What? 
I was about to say, how do I get up there? But apparently I just had to be close enough to know what was there, and it worked automatically. Sorry, ah, damn, I didn't here. mean that. Anywhere but here. Fine. Uh, we don't have to... <sighs> Too bad. Cut it out. So I think any main character, like if Duran is the second or third person in your party, any of them will have that conversation. It's only with Angela that they put this, like, cutesy, jokey element into it. Um... And these guys are excitable. Welcome. Lots of wares to browse. And uh doesn't look like we're gonna get anything new to buy. Well, lots of wares to browse. But the ladies don't have um Only she can use a glass ring, which is plus two and three. This is plus two and plus three as well. I don't know why we would use the gem ring on Charlotte, because she can use yeah, it's weird. It's like, it's cheaper, and only she can use it. Oh, good choice. I'll make use of this. And I guess the joke is, um, yeah, because oh, Angela said choice. she would make use of it. Good work. I guess the joke is that because Charlotte is like a cute little girl, she doesn't realize that that's a glass gem and it's worthless. Whereas Angela would recognize when that's a trinket. And it's not worthy to be worn by a lovely lady. And we went into the tavern. And we haven't done a full sweep for treasure, but... It seems unlikely there would be another uh, little cactus in this area. Because we already found a little cactus once in this screen. And, um... Like, if I see a treasure, I'll grab it. But I'm not... Oh, there's a stardust herb. I was just saying, oh, we've never found one of those. Better buy some just in case. And boom, immediately we find one. See, I mean, a little cactus would be in a field like this if he was going to be around. What? Strange to see these flowers bloom at this time of year. Seems like a bad omen to me, but who knows? You know who would know? My brother, Jose. Jose and Victor, and particularly Jose, are just having a much longer life as relevant characters to be discussed in this LP than they normally would. Alrighty. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember how did I get out of this place before when I did things in the correct sequence and I think I think Bon Voyage, bon Voyage or, or like a cousin of Bon Voyage or somebody showed up in the town setting up a cannon that actually shot me to where we need to go next. And now the game is giving us a fight all the way back. Yeah, we found this place and didn't know what to do with it. So we're, apparently we're going to find a special rear entrance. Don't let these holes get you down. Don't let them fall on the baby. Sorry. That's not really. They did not give me nearly enough, uh. To, like, stuff to make referencing that appropriate. That was just my own mind going off in a weird direction. I could have gone with, like, don't let the. There's various songs. I can't think of any now. Like, you know, don't let the sound of your own wheels drive you crazy or. Don't let the rain get you. Isn't there a song? Don't let the rain get you down. They said, "Don't let the something get you down." But I, I probably could have gone. Don't let the sound of your own wheels drive you crazy. I went with. I might like you better if we fought together. I might like you better if we fought together. And that's Blondie, isn't it? Or maybe it's not Blondie. I don't think it's Blondie, because Blondie does Atomic, and that's in the Vice City soundtrack, but there's some other kind of similar sounding... whatever. Yeah, we're, we're gonna go find a secret rear entrance to the Dwarf Caves that I didn't know was there. Because the... Because the main reason I decided to purchase that stuff from Watts is because I knew it would get us an extra chain ability. That again, we're going to lose when I load. I 
Interesting. Maybe this is what lets us go to that place I couldn't get to before. Or not. Maybe this is an entirely one-way passage that gets us back to the dwarf zone. The dwarf zone. Dwarves worship gnome as their gnome gnome as their patron elemental. Their weaponsmithing is legendary. Dwarves often mine the minerals they use for the You know, just randomly for whatever reason, I was watching an interview. It's 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 old, but it was uh Stephen Colbert being interviewed by Anderson Cooper and Colbert like briefly mentions Um, the Tolkien mythos and the Tolkien, uh, like how humans and elves are the children of Valinor, which I'm ashamed that I remember that. But I remember that from the interview that I watched recently. This is not something I knew before. Probably there's Tolkien folks out there who could tell me I, I might have this wrong. But, um... But it made me wonder, well, where the hell did the dwarves come from then? So I actually looked that up on, like, whatever the, uh, the Tolkien wiki is the other day, and the dwarves were invented by some other guy who created them without the permission of Valinor and then offered to destroy them because he wasn't supposed to have created them in the first place. But Valinor was like, no, don't destroy them. Just well, I'll magically put them to sleep until I'm done making the elves because the elves are supposed to be the firstborn. And and it seemed like, man, this just sucks for the dwarves. <laughs> this guy created them, and then he was like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. I just take them out. I don't care. I bet it explained why the dwarves in the Tolkien universe uh, aren't that crazy about the elves. Who are pretty high and mighty. Like, why are you talking about Tolkien in this game? Because every freaking fantasy game ever freaking rips off Tolkien. Even if it's uh, secondhand. Dungeons and Dragons is about 10% new material. Not counting all the stuff about how many dice you roll in order for fantastical things to happen. See, goblins would often have armor if they were... It's like they, they like to give you a battle where like whoever the toughest enemy is has armor. So out in the... Um, the Golden Road, where you've got like little cutesy rabbit enemies, and occasionally um, goblins. The goblins might have armor, but here it's like the high-end goblins. Except that maybe I'm wrong. It's always those high-end-looking goblins who show up with armor. Um, there's six more treasure boxes to be found if we care. And just by virtue of us not, um... Something is going... By virtue of us having come at this from the wrong direction, I'm kind of not sure what direction we should be going in to pro progress. I say, and then remember, oh, there's a big golden icon at all times. And essentially... The game has kind of dropped us off. Near the exit of this whole place. So other than the fact that we'll likely miss a little cactus this way. We could just skip all this crap. Because I think, uh... I think it dropped us off really close to the end of, uh... And we would have to come a really long way to get here from... The original entrance. The what? Yeah, they make these little weird wah noises when they die. And they got all sorts of urns that look like they should be breakable but aren't. And Luker. Lex Luker. Just starting to die from being beaten up by all these hobgoblins. 
Uh, goblins. Uh, goblins. What do you do with those uh, goblins? They're over here. They're over there. The darn hobgoblins are everywhere. Spaz out on the buttons against enemies that aren't way above your level, and you usually do okay. At least as far as dealing damage to win fights quickly, not necessarily conserving uh, MP by not having to heal. Oh, see? I knew there's a reason we came all the way down here. We found a little cactus. We're moving towards getting a discount in shops. Which doesn't really matter that much in this game. I have not found myself... This will change a little bit, potentially, when we get to... Um... Yeah, see, there's more little, like, optional treasures that we could be going after, but I don't know that I care. Um... And some of this could change a bit when you go after... Um... There's a place called the Night Market where there's a lot of consumable items that are kind of only can be purchased there and you might actually want to stock up on some of them. Like, theoretically, there's healing items you might want a 99 quantity of. Money might be meaningful then, but as far as just, like, buying the, you know, getting the next armor as you get into each town, being able to afford the gear there, I don't remember ever experiencing, and this goes for the SNES version too, a Final Fantasy 1 level of like, I need to save up and grind outside of every town to be able to afford the latest gear. Like, that's not really a problem in this game. Anyway, we found a little cactus. I doubt there's more than one little cactus. We got about half of the treasure boxes. Uh, let's spend our training points. Did we get what we were getting? Diamond shards? I was working on spirit now. To get victory MP boost. Because this will actually allow her... Break armor... And victory MP boost. I'll actually be able to start using magic against regular enemies. Because we'll have a way to get it back. Which hadn't really been uh, a thing before. Where I could reliably get it back. You are just going through all these things one at a time. So we'll save our game, put a card face down in our graveyard, and end our turn. But anyway, I guess now we know exactly how far we can get um, with our, quote, sequence break and trying not to get dwarf. Uh, and that's up to here, like... He gave us a new way, which I never knew about, to get to uh, the dwarf tunnels. But uh, we must go back and get dwarf. It was not possible for us to advance the story, because to get back out of Valsena... Well, you know, if I really wanted to be a butthead and push it as far as I could, we could leave the dwarf tunnel, go back to that town which won't let us in because they're afraid of all tenor spies and see if maybe they are gone. But I'm like 90% sure. I don't think it's even worth trying. That guy will still be there saying, you may be spies, you can't come in. Um, I don't think he goes away until we reach a point in the story where um, we're literally told to travel to that town, which we haven't been yet. So when we come back next time, I'm not even going to bother with trying to see if we can keep sequence breaking because the, the chances that you can get to the next point um, are so slim. We we need to actually go to that town, which was being blocked by that NPC, who looks like he's from Boston. He doesn't look like he's from Boston. He just looks like another NPC who's been voice acted as being from Boston before. Unless that guy's magically gone, which I don't think he will be until the, we are literally told by the king of... the hero king, go to this town. He doesn't say, that guy won't be there anymore. He just won't be there anymore once the hero king tells us to go there. So, um, 
if you really think that I should have done that, uh, buy the game for yourself and play through till you get to that point, and then tell me in the comments how you did it and you totally sequence broke the game and won the entire game without Gnome. Otherwise, when we come back next time, we will be getting Gnome. And then we will be going back to for, uh, Forcina, or Velcina. I'll be kind of curious as to how the story tells us to go there once we've already been there. But uh, that should be what's happening next time. See you then.